Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Sometimes I just keep saying it. Amen. Amen. You got to receive it. You got to confess it. Amen. Well, good morning. Good morning, church. Good morning to everyone online. If you are new here, welcome. Welcome. Uh, my name is Joshua, as you, as you just heard. And I'm going to pray over our children to head downstairs. But uh, if any teachers are here as well, make sure to come back up around 1045 to 1050 because we'll have time of fellowship today. But uh, let's pray over our children in the word this morning. Heavenly Father, thank you for your scriptures. Thank you for this time where we, we hear from you. Lord, upstairs and downstairs, will you prepare us to receive your truth this morning? In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, welcome to Family Mission Sunday. Family Mission Sunday. Today's going to be a little bit different. We've oftentimes in the fall had a full meal. We're not going to go for a full meal today, but we wanted to try something new as we started this year, regathering ourselves after summer. And sometimes the coming months can fly by with new rhythms and patterns and activities. So we thought it would be good to take a Sunday and orient ourselves as a church, as well as lay out some of the big upcoming things we'll be doing together between now and Christmas. We're seated around tables so that we will have the opportunity for some fellowship with pie and coffee cake and cookies and popcorn. We're mixing it up, everything but a full meal. Amen? All right, and then we also will have a time to fellowship with our apple picking at noon uh, this afternoon. So welcome to Family Mission Sunday. Please open your scriptures to Colossians 3. Colossians 3. We have completed our construction season, so we're, we're in a little bit of a gap right now, and then in late October, we'll be starting up the book of Romans together. So, Ro, uh, sorry, Colossians 3, starting in verse 12. Put on, then, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other, as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Family Mission Sunday. What do we mean by family mission? Well, first of all, you can't have a clear mission unless you have a vision. The mission is how you set about accomplishing that. Our vision here at Christ Church is that we are advancing the gospel as a kingdom family. I want to note that this is not a vision that we just came up with. It is how God has shaped us over decades of ministering together gathering together. He has shaped us as a family church, a kingdom family. So what is our church vision? Repeat after me. Advancing the gospel as a kingdom family. Ready? One, two, three. Advancing the gospel as a kingdom family. Now how do we go about doing this? That is mission. Did you know that the full name of Christ church is Christ New Testament church? So that would be a no. <laughs> but it's a little lengthy. And sometimes we shorten names, don't we? My full name is Joshua. It means something. I like to introduce myself as Joshua because it means Yahweh saves. But everybody calls me Josh. That's okay. <laughs> Our full name is Christ's New Testament Church. And that means, even as you heard Ty introduce Alan last week, we believe that the shaping done by the Holy Spirit in the church in the New Testament is the way he has shaped the church, period. So we look to the New Testament, to how we move, not as a prescription, but as a description of how the Holy Spirit comes alongside the church, how we're to be formed and governed. God created a new people for himself under the new covenant. Here's another one for you. Did you know that testament 
and covenant are two translations of the same word. The ultimate king of kings has established his kingdom on earth, and his name is Jesus. The Messiah that had been looked for throughout history of Israel was come, had come. When the king ascended to sit at the right hand of the Father, he sent the Holy Spirit to come alongside his people, shaping them with the gospel, just as God had shaped the Old Testament people with the law. We are still God's new community, the ones Jesus twice referred to as his church. Church means assembly, those he calls together to assemble in his name. So let's look to the New Testament to see what our mission looks like right here in this passage. Starting in verse 12, put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, Kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, all of these things from 12 to 15. Look at this. This is our interrelating with one another. Interrelating with one another. How we love one another. How we move one another. How we study the scriptures together. This is called discipleship. As we grow together. As we express our love for one another. Discipleship is one of the pillars. Worship, discipleship, and beyond the walls are our three pillars as Christ's church. And they have been since the beginning. Worship, what it says right there, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. See, the gospel is the word of Christ. That it's registering in our, in our hearts and then we confess it with our mouths in song here, with one another. The psalm of love and praise being in the heart finds vent in the lips as we worship together. And beyond the walls, whatever you do, (laughs) whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. If we are speaking and acting in his name, we are dependent upon him in every moment. And as we go and do things together, we glorify his name by our unity together and our mission going outward together. So, that being said, let's talk about a few things we're going to accomplish in our mission in the coming months. First of all, every Sunday, we will worship together in the name of Jesus. Amen? One of our pillars, our worship together. The New Testament says that his new people gathered on the first day of the week. Do you know what the first day of the week is? Sunday. That was not a trick question. This is it. This is it. This is it. Sunday. 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 Why did I do that like a monster rally? I don't know. A monster truck rally. But this was a massive change from the Old Testament community to the new. What? What could have happened to radically change the day of worship from Saturday to Sunday? The resurrection. The resurrection happened. So we worship. We gather together in the name of Jesus even the day of the week that we gather together, the first day of the week to recalibrate ourselves, the first day of the week to recognize Jesus Christ is risen. He is risen. Amen. Amen. So let's go. We worship together the first day of the week. What do we do the rest of the week? What do we do at other times? As we go, we make disciples, for sure. But it's so good to go together as well. So, here is a little chart of things that we are going to be doing together. And I'm specifically pointing out all church things uh, that we can do together. Maybe it's not clicking forward. But if you have the Christ Church app, you can look at this as well. So on the Christchurch app, if you haven't updated it in a while because you haven't been using it, naughty, naughty, no. Just update it, okay? On the Christchurch app, you can click under community and you'll see upcoming all church events and you'll see a list of dates and things that you can see. There's no way you can read this from where you are. I don't know why I showed this. Just, it's a visual aid. This is a phone. On phones are apps, okay? So (laughs) there you go. Home groups. Home groups are starting right now. Home groups are six-week studies 
that we do together. They are a smaller version of small groups. So small groups are all over the church. There's coffee grounds. There's the mom's group. There's all sorts of small groups. Now let me say this, church. As a part of the community, we really desire everyone. We expect, even as elders, we expect everyone to be a part of one small group. Okay, so home groups are starting right now. Climb is another one. I almost forgot to mention. Climb is another one going on. Small groups are ongoing. Many continue for years, <laughs> and that's awesome. Uh, but our expectation for everyone to be joined in one small group. And this is where we are share our lives together, church. This is outside of the Sunday morning where we share our lives together, where we pray for one another, where we can walk through life together as well as studying the word and growing in our relationship with God together. In October, we're having two, I want to put these on your radar, these are all invites, two nights of prayer and worship. Tuesday, the, those are wrong dates. Tuesday the 8th, Tuesday the 8th is going to be here at 7 p.m. and the 9th is going to be at the Refuge Church at 7 p.m. There are going to be awesome times of prayer and worship and very dynamically different, I can guarantee you that. Two very different fields as we are a diverse community of churches together. So here on the 8th and the Refuge on the 9th, and that's everybody's invited to that. On the Tuesday, the first one will be focusing on impartation and unlocking in the Holy Spirit. And on the second one, we'll be focusing on igniting the fire, igniting in the Holy Spirit. I said we will be starting Romans together. And then in November, November, Thanksgiving baskets. That's the big one for us as a church. I heard a woo-hoo. Now, some of you may not know what Thanksgiving baskets are, and that's okay. Even we'll have time together to talk about what these things are. Thanksgiving baskets where we gather food, a full Thanksgiving meal, and distribute them. And it originated from a prophetic vision with the youth some 35 years ago. Where, I saw him here. Dan, where are you? Dan had a vision of one of the youth walking up to a door led by the Holy Spirit and giving them a basket. That's where it started. We now do something like 130 baskets, 150 baskets, something like that, spread across our churches, across the Twin Cities, because we come alongside others in our mission. We are a strong family, and we come alongside others and give to the poor across multiple ministries. We are a kingdom family. Amen? And so we go and we demonstrate the power of the gospel through unity. And I just, I just have to, I know I'm right up against the time that I said we want to, but I have to share one. Because we don't often get to share about miracles, do we? And I, in my life, I've seen, you know, healings and, and all sorts of, of things. But the one that always stuck, one of the first ones that I ever really witnessed was in a Thanksgiving basket night. And we went to a church in North Minneapolis And they told us to bring 18 Thanksgiving meals. And we brought 18 turkeys and 18 baskets. And they had everybody sign up. And they were in the the church, this little church hall. And then the lobby filled with people too. And so there were the 18 that signed up that were right in front of us. And we prayed over them. And we gave them the baskets. And then we said, what do we do about the people in the lobby? And we said, let's, let's go, let's, let's give it, and let's see how much, maybe there'll, there'll be some leftovers as, as, as people don't show up. Well, all 18 did show up. But we kept on unloading turkeys from the truck. Not one person left that didn't get a turkey. It was the tr- we left this church with 18 turkeys. This is what I know, okay? Not everybody got the full meal, but every single person left with a turkey. I was there, I was doing, that's why I'm doing this. I was doing this, and I, I don't, I was in the fireman line, And all I know is the pastor there said, everybody left with a turkey. We go on mission together and amazing things happen. Amazing things. And then December, we have the giving tree where we work alongside local schools and middle schools and and things like that to give Christmas presents to kids who can't afford them, families that can't afford them. It is going to be changing a little bit this year rather than a tree in the lobby. Alyssa is going to be working with our home groups and ministries so that your home group will adopt a family together to go out 
And then Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve. For me, it's the richest of our family traditions. You guys all know I love Christmas. I love Christmas. My whole family comes on Christmas Eve. It is part of our natural family tradition as well. Celebrating the birth of our king in song and in generosity with our giving tree. These are some of the things that are going to be coming up in the next few months. So if you have the app, you can see the dates so you can put them on the calendar and know when things are coming. But also don't forget that fellowship is missional too. Amen? Fellowship is missional. The purpose of fellowship is to build relationship. And the focus of this time of fellowship is to talk about our upcoming opportunities. Share stories. Is there anybody at your table who doesn't know what some of these things are? Let's talk about it. And feel free to pull me over as well if you want. But there's one thing, I don't know if you caught it, in this passage that happens three times. Did you catch it? Give thanks. Do you know that Thanksgiving just doesn't have to happen on Thanksgiving? (laughs) So as we fellowship with one another, give thanks. Give thanks to our Father. Give thanks because our fellowship is in Christ. We are brothers and sisters. And maybe you're in small groups and haven't met some people. Maybe you want to mix up tables and sit by somebody different. That's okay too. But as you get together and you take that first bite of coffee cake or pumpkin pie or whatever it is, that's why we did pumpkin pie. It also was available right now, just so you know. Give thanks. Give thanks to our Father. Matthew Henry says this, those who do all in Christ's name will never want a matter of thanksgiving to God. We have plenty to give thanks for. Amen? Amen? So can you stand? Heavenly Father, thank you for everything that you have ahead of us. Everything that you have planned for us. Lord, we always, we lay our plans down We recognize you, Jesus, as the head of this church. So, Lord, will you lead us? Will you build us up today? Bless the food. Bless our fellowship today. Bless the apple picking later on at noon. Whatever else is happening at noon, that's okay, too. But the apple picking at noon, Lord, bless it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen. All right, can you sit down first? I'm going to let you out one table at a time so they don't have a big backup in the lobby, okay? So one table at a time. But dig in with each other right now. Just get to learn, say thanks, and get to know one another. Amen.